Hello friends, hope you all are doing well. Here we have our brother, Augustine Wilson. He will be sharing his testimony with us. Let's welcome brother Augustine Wilson. Hello brother, how are you? I'm fine, thank you Sister Taj. Thank you for the opportunity to share my walk with Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I hope that uh, it will be a blessed time together. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, understand uh, your background, how you come to know Jesus Christ in your life. Where is your, uh, what is about your family background? You're from Pakistan, right? Yes, I was born in Pakistan and uh, I lived in Pakistan uh, for quite some time. And about 30 years ago, we moved to Australia. So with regards to my uh, accepting Lord Jesus Christ, I was actually born in a Christian family. Uh, we are a third generation uh, Christians by birth, but my grandfather and my grandmother were of a different religion. My grandfather was a Hindu and my grandmother was a Muslim. So uh, in a pre-partition time, uh, when they accepted Lord Jesus Christ and became born again Christians, um, they were doing their, their own jobs, but uh, missionaries put them together as a family. So that must be somewhere in around 1915, 16, 17, around that period of time. And then of course, then they started the family. So my, they became the first generation born again Christians. Then when my father was born, he was a second generation Christian. And uh, then we became the third generation Christian. So me and my siblings. Wow. So we were born, in, uh, from that point of view, we were born in a, a already Christian family. And it was a very disciplined Christian family. Um, we were just living in a town uh, of a 50,000 uh, population and the only Christian family in that town. So we had a very strong uh, Christian brought up in the family. Uh, that would mean uh, doing daily prayers, reading the scriptures, in the time of Lent fasting. Every now and then my father used to fast three times a week, full 24 hours fasting, no drink, nothing by mouth, and spend a lot of time in reading the scriptures and praying. So that kind of a transferred into um, us as well. But uh, um, as far as my personal um, birth is concerned, that was in 1970, when I came uh, to a bigger city called Hyderabad, uh, for my college education. And uh, from there, we went for a conference in Karachi, um, uh, Youth for Christ conference, it was. And uh, we went through for a week, uh, week there. And uh, in one of the sessions, uh, one of the speakers uh, asked us, how many of you are born again? Have you given your life to Christ? And till that time, I really did not have uh, a good knowledge of this uh, born again thing. And uh, uh, then he uh, taught us from the uh, book of uh, Gospel of uh, John, chapter 15 and verse, uh, verses one to seven. And then I realized uh, that um, how important it is to accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior and then commit to him. And then uh, the verse five, of that chapter, John 15, five, became my life and became my motto till today. Wow. And uh, I, I was able to catch that very verse, uh, the wording of that, where Jesus said, um, uh, without me, you can't do anything. So, uh, and it is so true. And then it has been a altogether different life. And uh, not only in the spiritual realm, but also in the physical realm. So God willing, we'll talk about it as we go further. Yes, awesome. That's very, uh, um, like, it's that light, isn't it? That sparkles in our heart. Like when he uh, speaks to us through his word like that. That really touched my heart, like as you were telling, you know, I'm feeling that uh, the call, you know, even into me, like I can remember and uh, understand how I was also called, you know, understand that. That's a wonderful thing when God chose us. 
That's very beautiful, brother. Then from there, how did you, um, like uh, after the partition or whatever, you moved into Pakistan, right? Isn't it that this is the, uh, the, part the partition you're talking about, India and Pakistan partition. Okay, just so to- that was, that, was, that was the time when my parents got married, uh, 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 not uh, parents and their parents got married. But uh, I actually moved from a small town called Shadatpur, where I had my school education, to a bigger city of Sindh, Pakistan, Hyderabad it is called, to do my college. Because uh, I wanted to uh, do engineering or science subjects. So this, this, the effect of this verse, that without me you can't do anything, has a relationship with my studies. I did my, uh, because it was a small town, so I did my matriculation in the science subjects and even studied chemistry in, in Urdu. Can you imagine? <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, because the teachers uh, were not really, uh, I should say smart teachers were not really available. So whatever was available, uh, we just took it. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Hyderabad for my uh, year 11 college, everything was in English. Maths was uh, at a higher level, chemistry was in English, physics was in English and there I came from a small town and uh, not familiar with the concepts of chemistry because we learned it uh, just for the sake of uh, you know passing the exam and the pace of life and the pace of education was higher so I was really uh, most of the time under under this uh, uh, pressure from the for my studies so when I went into this conference and when um, I was given the opportunity to accept Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior, the emphasis on personal savior, because I knew a lot about um, uh, about the scriptures at that time, about Jesus Christ. In fact, by that time, I had already finished reading the whole scriptures from Genesis to, to Revelation. And I've been um, fasting every now and then. And I was very familiar because of my dialogue with my Muslim friends as well. But this concept of knowing Jesus personally and hanging on to him, taking him in in your spirit in your mind in your soul you know in your brain in your eyes in your heart beating was a different concept so when that mr jim brown his name was from usa and uh, he um, gave us the challenge and we accepted it and after that and at that time also i i was baptized in the spirit holy spirit as well and i was feeling very energized things started you know uh, uh, working uh, my way when I came back and we, I used to get up at about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. God will just wake me up and I'll go into my, you know, at that time we had two, two, two bedroom uh, house and I would go in the kitchen, kneel down on the floor and um, even put just kitchen towels under my knees, you know, because it was a bare <laughs> floor. And then um, uh, just raise my hands and pray. Even I used to pray in the tongues. And um, then things started to move. And somehow I started to learn, understand the physics concepts, mathematical concepts, chemistry concepts. So I, from the bank bench, I started moving forward, 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 forward. In about, I think, three months' time, I was sitting most of the time on the front row. Before that, I used to sit on the second last, third last row of the class. And by the grace of God, we did good. And uh, I, I graduated in year 12 in a, with a good marks. And I was able to get admission in the university, uh, college you know, uh, engineering university. And I elected to study electrical engineering. And uh, uh, God miraculously uh, took me through those four years. And I graduated as uh, electrical engineer. And then the other blessing started. In between, I, I was clinging on this on this verse and I became the youth leader I was a used to be a very shy person because uh, as I told you we were the only Christian family and we never had a church there and um, uh, so it's a uh, pastor used to come once a month to give us holy communion and you know take a service otherwise uh, no church um, kind of atmosphere only on Christmas and Easter we used to come down to this uh, big city where other relatives were and celebrate with them. So I was a shy. I was always, uh, you know, uh, kind of a retarded in my uh, communication or in my, uh, in my PR and meeting people and this and that. But this very verse gave me so much of strength that I became a youth leader. And I became a very, uh, you know, a president of the youth group. Then uh, I also became 
uh, youth leader and established youth groups uh, in the whole of diocese. And that was um, two states of Pakistan, like Sindh and Balochistan. Mm -hmm. uh, that was during my college studies, uh, sorry, university studies. And uh, when I graduated, I made a promise to myself that I will not join the organization where the bribery was a common, which is what we call um, uh, Water and Power Development Authority. People used to bribe to get jobs, and when they were put in, they, were, they couldn't survive without taking a bribe. So you started with a junior engineer, then you way go up, you know, um, in uh, in your in your career. But right from the day one, up to you leave that organization, the whole culture was that you have to bribe, you know, uh, um, and uh, eat up the government money and you know do all, all kind of things. So I promised myself that I'm not going to join that. Even the offer came, I did not join it. Somebody told me that there's, there was a Canadian firm doing a project in Pakistan. And that was, uh, that company was uh, about 1500 kilometers from my place where I was living. So I just, um, you know, applied on a piece of paper, wrote an application, posted it half-heartedly. And in months time, I got a, a letter from them saying, come if you are interested. So I got my first job without even an interview. And I had to make a decision to travel and live into this another city called Lahore, which is right in the middle of Pakistan in Punjab. And we were from the down south, Sindh. So God uh, helped me uh, in that jo job. And I was the only Pakistani with the Canadians, with a lot of power, authority. Everybody used to talk about behind the backs. How did he, he got this job? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's Christian. They are Christian, although they were not. They only had English names. But yeah. people started connecting us from that point of view, you know? Yeah. And uh, when I was in this in that job, uh, the time came and I, I was engaged with my wife, Catherine. And I came down. And when I came down for the wedding uh, from Lahore to my native town, uh, as we had this celebration going on and there was a, um, a, a function going on, uh, I was uh, told by one of my friends that there are some jobs available at the university as lecturer and i was always wanted i always wanted to come uh, to come back to hyderabad and was curious that if there are any opportunity arises in karachi or hyderabad i'll come back so i applied for that job and um, uh, luckily um, after going through the interviews i was selected as a lecturer at the university to teach electrical engineering mm -hmm. that i did for a couple of years and then um, I wanted to go abroad to do my master's degree. And uh, I was accepted in America, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Then in England, a uh, couple of colleges at Salford, at um, King's College in um, uh, London itself, University of Manchester. And I had also applied for the um, uh, admission in the University of New South Wales here in Australia and the Monash University. What happened that uh, as I was preparing to go to London, the offer came from the University of New South Wales. In between something else happened, and I must mention that. What had happened that at the time I, when I was teaching at the university, I had this beard, French style beard. And of course I was a young, smart uh, lecturer. People started following me. And my chairman, he was very angry with me. I mean, uh, and he said, because of you, the students are keeping this beard. You know, this is non-Islamic beard. And they, uh, I said, I'm not asking anyone. In fact, we don't even talk about it. If they are copying me, that's it's their business. You tell them, you stop them. Because of this grudge that he had, what happened that um, I was supposed to get with pay leave to do a master's. And they were three weeks short to qualify that period. And if the chairman had recommended the registrar would have accepted, the dean of faculty would have accepted, the vice chancellor would have accepted, because he was the first letter, first uh, pillar of the letter, first step of the letter, I should say. He refused, based on that grudge. And I was so angry that I said, no, I'll go. And God just favored me while I was going through this tension, shall I go, shall I not, shall I go, shall I not? I got this offer from the University of 
New South Wales, and there was no fee for the foreign students. I'm talking about seventy nine in Australia. In Australia, exactly. So that is how God brought me to do my masters here, and it was two years course. And there's a lady here who used to be a missionary in Pakistan in our church, and she taught us, uh, a, you know, uh, uh, young leaders uh, uh, Bible studies in my youth group there in Pakistan, and she was from Australia. Her name is Joan. Uh, uh, now she's Joan Egan. At that time, she was Joan Thompson. And I shared with her that this is my problem, and uh, they said, "Don't worry, we'll see what we can do." And then uh, they offered me the accommodation. Mm -hmm. I came, and two years course I did in 14 months, <laughs> and 14 months uh, master's course doing in most most of the course were in subject form, which is very very rare because even the university told me that. We normally don't offer these uh, subjects of, of power system in such a sequence. Then three in one semester, next three in next semester, next three in the other third semester. The reason was that there was no enrollment usually that much, and that sometimes the professors were not available, and they were encouraging to do masters by research only. But God knew what he he had a plan for me, and I still think that it was particularly designed for my needs because. When I went back, I was the only person uh, in the whole of the province of having such a specific qualifications with the power systems of Pakistan. Uh, power system is studying here. That means generation, transmission, distribution of the electrical power at a very high voltage. Mm. So I was immediately, when I went there um, the, and met the vice chancellor, he thought I have come to celebrate Christmas because it was a Christmas, uh, three weeks before Christmas. And I told him, no, sir, I've come here to report for my duty. He said, huh? It's only 12 months ago you went. I said, yes, but I've done it. He was so happy and so surprised to see me. He, after, in I think two months time, they promoted me to the position of assistant professor, giving me, me six extra increments in my salary. And then there were different projects that, uh, that, the, uh, that the university has taken. And they made me in charge of one or two. And because of those courses that I did here, I was able to, you know, uh, discharge my duties and accept the challenges and uh, kind of I became, uh, kind of become the uh, uh, valuable person to the team uh, that was working on those projects. But God had something more for me. As I started uh, my teaching career as a student professor at the university, I think about, in about one and a half years time, there was a position available as the director of a technical institute in Karachi, uh, YMC Technical Institute. It's an international organization. And for the last 22 years, we had German, American, New Zealander directors over there, mostly Germans. And the time came and they said, we cannot give you the foreign directors now. You have to appoint a national director from Pakistan, from Pakistan and uh, all that. And uh, they approached me to the bishop. If I'm interested, I had to go through the you know uh, normal procedure of application, interviews, mm -hmm. for interview, interview. And by the grace of God, I uh, was accepted and elected and selected for that job as the director of the YMCA Technical Institute. And I took it as a challenge because uh, I was the first national director with appropriate qualification of engineering and teaching. And my challenge was to make it self-sufficient because the aid started to diminish. And they said, this is now you have to do yourself. And that was my challenge. So by the grace of God, I was uh, able to turn around things. I depended upon this verse, as I told you. And uh, there was another verse that I heavily banked upon, and that was Isaiah 42, uh, rather uh, 43, verse 2, which said that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Amen. So, uh, I changed the teaching program. I had a meeting with a lot of people. We started new ventures. And uh, within 
I think about uh, four years, we started uh, becoming self-sufficient. In fact, we, 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 we became income generating uh, uh, institute. And uh, around that time, United Nations wanted to launch a program in Pakistan for the refugees. Uh, prior to that, there was, uh, you know, Russia attacked Afghanistan. So there were millions of refugees that came from Afghanistan into Pakistan. But around that time also, Khomeini came over and took Iran. So, you know, the people of the Bhai faith, they were migrating to Pakistan quietly. And over the period of time, they uh, came to Pakistan in thousands. So uh, the, the United Nations in Geneva approached the YMC office in Geneva if YM can, YMCA can do something. So the local uh, president of the YMCA and the general secretary and the associate general secretary, they said, no, 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 we don't want to touch this. this there's a lot involved with it. And I just went down to general secretary's office for a cup of tea, you know, morning tea. And then say, oh, he's our hero. He might do something. So I had this initial discussion with the Americans, those who were sitting there. And I took the, you know, information from them and then went to my office. In day, two days time, I developed uh, two projects out of that and I offered my services and uh, they were very happy. So that project, which is started with only a few thousand American dollars, converted uh, within two years time, converted into a five million US dollars. So I became the project director of United Nations. See the hand of God. When you commit to him, when you depend on him, when he is your breath, he is your life, and you know that in spite of my qualifications from you, from Australia, from Pakistan, my position as director, being assistant professor and all that, I was just climbing the stairs one after the other. So by the grace of God, I was able to uh, come into the international light. And there was a lot of praises going on in the United Nations about me, my personally by name and by uh, YMCA in Pakistan. Uh, and uh, in between, when things were just flowing, and we were able to settle a lot of refugees, giving them uh, English language training, and also later on then giving them the technical training because we were technical institute. So we trained them in being electrician, plumber, welder, mechanics, AC mechanics, auto mechanics, this and that. So while this was all going on, I was uh, invited to a young leaders world young leaders conference in Singapore. That was in 1987, and I was uh, elected to or requested to become the uh, leader of the team that will uh, in, uh, represent Pakistan. So we went there, and Dr. Michael Yusuf, uh, uh, yeah. you know, he, he was there as a young young leader there, one of the young leaders. And uh, after that, uh, from there, we in 1989, I was invited to Luzon Movement Conference in Manila. You know, Dr. Billy Graham and his brother-in-law, Dr. Uh, Lytton Ford, and a uh, lot of other international fame people were there, Dr. Deving Wong, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Stott, uh, what's his name, full name, John Stott, you know, uh, very significant name of the evangelical world. They were all there, Ajit Fernando, I had the opportunity to uh, meet with them, dine with them, walk with them, talk to them. So these people were just uh, kind of, they came into my life, not knowing that after a couple of years, we'll migrate to Australia. And then later on, I will start the ministry as well. So, so this, it has been a very rich and powerful and beyond measure blessing that all happened because I clinged to John, John's gospel, chapter 15, first seven, eight verses, and later on dwelt on it. And um, of course, there were a few ups and downs in the life that, that, that are that, no, but I never looked back, even till today. I've never looked back. I've, I never was backslidden with the time that, that the, the speaking in tongues left me. But one day God is going to bring it back. But uh, uh, when we came to Australia, I was associated with the Anglican Church, Diocese of Sydney. Uh, I was um, warden in the in, in my local church. I was representative in the uh, synod, 
and um, uh, before we moved, uh, I was uh, appointed as a project uh, manager here with the Department of Employment, Education and Training that I led and guided and helped young uh, migrants uh, and migrants from the non-English speaking background, uh, you know, uh, to get into the force here, into the workforce and uh, settle down well. So God has been great. Uh, then in 2005, God spoke to me about opening a ministry um, in relation to his second coming. That's why, that's where the rapture ready ministry came into being. So, um, unless you have any other question, then we may, be take, we may take it into a... <laughs> yeah, that's the question. So, anyhow, you are... So, but what led you to come to uh, Australia? How did God lead you to Australia? Like, it, how did you know that it was his call? Because from your humble beginning, I actually can type you with uh, David, the King David, how from a humble beginning, from a start, where now you can teach English to the to the people and the institute and recognize in various universities internationally. And uh, that shows how God's hand has uh, kept you to prosper you. Like David was pro becoming prosperous as a king because he chose, God chose that humble shepherd, right? Of all the people, he chose them. So when you're speaking, I can see uh, David rising up in this age from a humble beginning to whatever you are today. That's wonderful. But how, what gave you this call to move from your uh, country to Australia? How did you know God called you to Australia? Yes, uh, I was always fascinated by Jews and by Israel. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Pakistan does not recognize Israel as a country. And I think uh, ours is the only passport, the Pakistani passport very clearly says, valid for all the countries of the world except Israel. So that kind of, you know, uh, took my attention when I was traveling, of course, uh, to Germany or uh, other parts of the Europe in relation to my assignment with the United Nations and uh, with the YMCA's and for, for these conferences, you know, Christian conferences. I had a burning desire developed into me that I want to go to Israel. I must see. And I started praying about it. But then something else happened. There was another position uh, in the government uh, as the director of the Export Promotion Bureau, within the Export Promotion Bureau. And I applied, I, I was interviewed. By the time I had also done MBA uh, while I was uh, working as a director in the evening classes at the university. And I was, uh, with my experience, knowledge, I, I was a very strong candidate. And I went through this uh, process of selection and I was, told from the inside that I have got the job. But the letter didn't come. The appointment letter was not issued. So we waited and waited and waited and waited. But at, the, at that moment, I was having three caps on my head, one being the director and the principal of the, United, uh, of the Technical Institute, project director of the United Nations. There was another um, uh, community development program, and I was the chief executive officer of that YMC Urban Uplift. We used to make uh, medical, medical beds, hospital beds for the, uh, as an income generating project and employing the people, um, uh, especially uh, Christian young people into the projects who could do manual work and be a, a fruitful member of the family. And Benazir Bhutto came on in the power and one of her official and special duty person was very well known to me. And through him, I wanted to probe as to what has happened. And um, uh, he approached Benazir Bhutto. Mm -hmm. I went with him to uh, Islamabad and in, within the Ministry of Commerce, mm -hmm. uh, Benazir Bhutto even wrote on my application to issue orders but still the orders were not issued. And then it came to our knowledge that they say that it was a very, very high position. And they say in the Pakistani constitution, non-Christians cannot hold, go beyond grade 22, 
that was a 23 grade job and 24 grade is the minister. And that broke my heart. I said, if this is the situation, we work so much for the nation and the country and uh, have been living here happily and working hard. I think that was the uh, 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 hurt that I had, but it may have been a good reason for me to think about moving out because my initial desire was to be able to go to Israel and see the places where Jesus was born, where Jesus walked, where he died, where he rose again, where he preached, where he did his miracles and all these kind of things. So <clears throat> then I started thinking in terms of migrating uh, to Australia. I was already here in 80, 79, August I came, 80, December I left. And um, uh, for 10 years I served my country, served my church. And in 1990, towards the end, 21st November 1990, we were able to uh, migrate back to Australia. And uh, as soon as we got our citizenship, I went to Israel and had my first visit. And um, it was such a blessing. And uh, after that, uh, I was involved in a few other things. And when in 2005, when God spoke to me and showed, spoke to me in my spirit and showed me uh, um, things uh, through the dreams, that I need to uh, take up a specific uh, direction in the ministry, apart from the church involvement. And that was uh, his second coming and preparing the church for his second coming. And the target group that he laid on my heart was uh, people from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, you know, that, that region. On also the same people uh, from uh, people from the same region, those who are settled in USA, Canada, America, Europe, and other places. So thank God um, when I had this dream and when I had this uh, uh, notion, I studied the subject and I spent two years and then I went to different places in the world to confirm the call that I had in my life. I uh, met with Oral, Oral Roberts in Oklahoma and also uh, a lot of other uh, minister, uh, ministers, I've forgotten some of the names. And um, thank God that uh, they prayed with me and they said, yes, it's from the Lord and uh, you go ahead. And I wanted to keep myself first. So I studied hard and uh, went into the subject. And then I started going um, uh, out into Pakistan and um, Middle East and uh, Europe and America and Canada to conduct these seminars about, I wrote a um, number of books. Uh, in fact, I've written uh, 15 uh, uh, of those small booklets, but um, I have put them together as a one book as well, um, which says concise study of the end times. So there are about 14 chapters there. I also wrote a book on the Holy Spirit, uh, learning about the Holy Spirit and learning about the kingdom of God. So every now and then I go overseas and I speak to Pakistanis uh, living there uh, and um, I edify the Church of Pakistan uh, at different levels through workshops, through seminars, through uh, Sunday speaking, home groups and uh, that is how things are happening. Yeah, awesome. That's a, a wonderful long journey, right? It's a real long journey. Very light. How yes, if you could yeah and how you feel when you cling to god and then how he can take you like you know um how are you around the world and prosper you and then get his word to reach out to people i think you've worked from the lowest level to the refugees or people into different uh, extremes and to the u.n nations and with the every realm i think he has taken you around that's a wonderful blessing just when we trust god and cling to that word I think that also brought you to Israel. That's also another, that opens this outlet to come into Australia. So now uh, this one question that the Spirit of the Lord just placed in my heart, um, mm -hmm. because since uh, your background is from Pakistan, most of us around the world, we see it as a nation because you have a Christian background. It talks about persecution. Would you please just touch that a bit and how it is handled, how how you as Christians handle 
if there's anything comes against or there are lots of people there recently i saw a video where a lady is crying that the church because of the virus time it was broken down or you know things like that so how uh, how that as christians you all are facing it or is it consistent or how often these things are just to give a light just can you just give us a briefing about it and it's a it's, it's a burden which uh, most of the christians carry around them um, when they are in good number in ghettos they feel protected but mm -hmm. when you are on the road or when uh, you are preaching or something else happens it is sparks sparks and uh, you know comes against them one of the problem uh, of uh, this persecution is that because of the literacy rate is very low in pakistan the other thing is that people are emotional so most of the time people are misinformed anything that goes into america they think oh christians then the effect comes on to pakistani christians you know and the hatred that has that is there for years and years and years it wasn't it wasn't so up to i would say uh, up to mid 75 but somehow it started growing from 1974 75 even up to now in fact these days the conditions are a little bit better compared to the previous years but there was a time uh, i would say in the last decade everything was on peak because the the they fabricated stories that someone has burned that someone has blasphemed against or something has been said without going into the proofs everyone gets affected those who are on the street those who are in the neighborhood those who are in the police station those who are in the in the in the court system they become emotional and when they emotion become emotional that's what they do they 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 uh, break your uh, you know um, uh, they attack your houses they attack the churches they break their walls and try to harm and show their anger Uh, recently they have been kidnapping girls because in punjab actually is 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 a way of uh, making their living so if a elder woman is working as a housemaid she will take her you know 10 years 12 years daughter instead of sending them to the schools they can't afford so these people have eyes on young girls like this and uh, often um, we see that uh, they have been kidnapped they have been raped they have been uh, you know tortured and disappear you know um, killed and everything but uh, thanks to asia bibi that when she was released from this supreme court uh, things have changed a bit because imran khan is a, you know very educated person moderate person um, uh, they have realized that we cannot grow and come in competition with other neighboring countries and uh, you know, on the world screen if we just start you know acting as foolish as they have been in the last decade or so so uh, it is always heartbreaking because even in christianity there are two classes those who are educated are well placed in the society but those who are not that educated what we call them uh, basti people you know people living in the in the mud houses or uh, um, what's the right word um, but they are they are laborers they work uh, at uh, in the factories in the houses um, in the brick kilns and things like that and they are very very marginalized even recently as recent as uh, two months ago one yeah one and a half to two months ago you know that uh, because of corona government uh, gave the grant of 12000 each family not many of them received and there were uh, charity groups they were distributing food food items and they went into areas where uh, christians were living and they refused to give so what i'm saying is that when we see these things our heart breaks so i i did run a uh, you know a campaign here and thank god that uh, our christian brother and sister helped me to raise about 4000 dollars and i've sent that uh, this money to them and there's a um, the church leaders are trying to help as much as they can but these things keep happening every now and then because of that hatred that is there yeah hatred uh, so yeah we yeah, see, yeah. Yeah, we can only pray and love our enemies you know those who hate us that's one one scripture i can remember 
and mm -hmm. pray for mm -hmm. them that persecute us, right? So those are the things. And it's wonderful that had to see how God could uh, come, you know, make ways for us, make ways for us where from here you are able to help them back in your nation where they are, where they are needed in that uh, lowest area. You know, we need to go and address mm -hmm. to those extreme, uh, uh, you know, uh, areas, vulnerable areas where we need to give these kind of help to them. That's wonderful to know. And uh, that's uh, amazing to hear all these. I think I hope uh, some of the things have been clarified, how God has brought you through and how we can connect Australia and Pakistan or the rest of the world. Now let's uh, take a look at your uh, uh, ministry. How did, what is it that uh, told you that you have to do something on the second coming of Christ? So uh, what led you to uh, know that that is your call and what have you done uh, or what God has led you to do in order to pursue it? Could you please uh, show some light on that? Yeah, the idea was that uh, this subject was um, not taught uh, in, in our growing years when I was in the uh, youth and then uh, the church services. Uh, you, you hardly see anyone talking about it. Everybody knows Jesus is coming back. But then what is required? So when God uh, touched me uh, on this subject and he gave me uh, um, an assignment, I should say, to prepare the church, that means to thresh things out as to what would be the order, what is the requirement. I used to say, I still say, that if on earth here you are only a nominal Christian and you really don't know what this book says. You do not know how to pray. You do not know who really Jesus is. What is his authority? Before going to heaven, he said, all the authority and power has been given to me. All. It's not 50%, it's not 20%, it's not 60% uh, or 90%. It's all. That means 100% or more. Yeah, given to Jesus, so, he says, given to me. Yeah, given to Jesus, he said, you know, yeah, in, yeah, in, in, in Matthew yeah. chapter 28. Amen. So what, uh, we, we as a church, we as his bride, versus his, we as his brother and sister, how much are we in cashing? When I was director of the YMCA, one of the things that we were involved in was sending the labor to Middle East. You know, Dubai, Muscat, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, in all these places. And we were the testing agency. So people would come to me and they say, can you get us a visa for Dubai? Can you get us a visa for Saudi or this country or that country? Can you send my nephew, my son, my, my, my boy? I said, how can I do it? You are the director. You know, that was, and I was number one boss. So they thought because I am number one, I can do anything. How about this about thinking of Jesus? He said, all the power and authority has been given to me. How much of that authority and power do we take share of? How, much, how do we call on him? Yeah? And he's the one who's going to come and take the church to heaven. So here, the church is not singing out loudly. Church doesn't know who Jesus is. Church doesn't know the power and authority that he carries with him. And we only know uh, uh, on the surface that he died for us. Many, many times we do not even know what exactly happened to him on the cross. We only talk about the seven sayings on the Good Friday. One day in a year. So there's a lot to understand the authority, power, personality, uh, and, um, and, uh, and all that Jesus did, as well as prepare ourselves in the light of his coming. For instance, uh, we are a chosen nation. Now, there are certain characteristics of a chosen nation. How many of us we know about it? Do we live by those standards? And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he said, you are the light. How many of us shine for him? You see? So what I'm trying to say here is that there are qualifications to be raptured. Not every Christian is going to go away, uh, to be taken up. And nobody knows whether they'll be taken up or not. Even, uh, I mean, I have to have that assurance. but. I have the graph before me, I have the pattern before me, I have the, um, uh, what you call, uh, uh, prerequisites before me. There are more than 20 requirements for a believer to, 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 to be raptured. How many of us know? So 
by the grace of God, I put them into my into my into my book. So here, in 24 hours time per day, we don't even give him 24 minutes. And there we we expect us to go up there and praise him, praise him, praise him. People don't even know the uh, uh, names of Jesus Christ. How many names has he got? So what I'm saying here is that this is what it means. That what are the end times? The scripture says, the law came through Moses, but the grace and the truth came through Jesus Christ. And when did it come? At the end of the age. So the age has already started when Jesus was born, 2000 years ago. Amen. Right? How much we have traveled? How much church has traveled? How much are we looking? And it says very much in, um, uh, I think, Hebrews 9.28. He will only be seen by those who are waiting for him to come and appear in the sky. You know? So if the church is not waiting, they are busy with their activities, with their earnings, with their day-to-day -day affairs. Yes, it is there. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And why this is so? Because the relationship is not right. The understanding is not right. Other day I was uh, talking to a church in Manila. Just two days ago I spoke from here about that Father's Day. So the relationship of, uh, with the God the Father cannot be established if we first don't accept Lord Jesus Christ. Because it says very clearly in John 1.12, those who accepted him, he means Jesus, he gave them the power to become the adopted children of God. So only by calling Abba, Father, 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 Father doesn't make you his children. You have to really know the source which gives you the permit and authority to become his children. That means accepting Lord Jesus Christ, being born in him. Accept him with your heart, mind, and soul that this is what Jesus is. As I uh, uh, mentioned to you about that uh, uh, statement that Jesus made in, 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 in John 15, 5. It's a statement. But look at the weight in that statement. He said, you cannot do anything without me. Simple as that. Finish. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not a commandment. It's not a request. It is a statement. A statement of the Son of God. A statement by a person who has your future. He is the judge. How many of us really take this statement into our mind, into our soul, into our heart, into our spirit? We do not even know the weight that it carries. We always talk about he is the true wine, we are the branches, and if we are killing to him, we become this, we become that, and he prunes and this and that. But look at this, number five. Because of that, he abides in us, which is number seven. Verse number 7, chapter 15, John. So we have to really understand the impact and the weight that these verses carry. Why did he say, uh, as, a, as a last statement before going to heaven, that all power and authority has been given to me? That means think about it, what I can do for you, even sitting over there. So that is the challenge of our ministry. When people call me to speak, I speak um, uh, on uh, like one-off service. I, usually when I conduct seminars I, I, uh, in the other parts of the world or even here, I take the whole evening of Saturday, at least good four hours evening, and then I conclude with the church. Because there's another thing. There's a judgment for believers, which is different from the judgment of the world. There's some criteria, some judgment. When I was professor at the university, the, the uh, three months before I took the job of uh, director of the YMCA, the German director wanted to leave immediately. And I told the German director, from whom I was supposed to take the charge, that I cannot come. I have to finish this batch that I'm teaching at the university. And I told him, you know why? I was teaching two subjects and one thesis. So out of 600, total marks for any person in that batch. I had 300 in my hand. 50% marks I had in my hand. What it means? It means that I was the person who could have given a gold medal to someone. 
the first position the second position and the third position was in my power and i knew if i leave it 3 months before because of the you know um, uh, wrong practices some deserving person will leave the will not get the opportunity to become the gold medalist because the difference between the uh, first position and the second position is hardly by 2 3 marks and i wanted to have that power with me because of my calling to the lord i said let me do the finish this after the exam once i submit my assessment to the vice chancellor i didn't even give it to the registrar or uh, to the dean of faculty i said i am going to give my envelope to the vice chancellor and if he wants to play around it is his prerogative but my heart and conscience will be clear and that's what i did so what i'm saying is that there are requirements there are assessments there are questioning that has to be put before us to be answerable we often as christians we take it very lightly that jesus died on the cross that's finished we don't have to worry about but there do you know there are 705 commandments in the new testament alone you will don't talk about it 705 commandments and 17 or 18 of them are compulsory essential that's another uh, subject that i'm going to take up uh, with the church god willing uh, very soon yeah. but just because we take everything so easy our mind doesn't go mm. and uh, you know um, uh, we just uh, uh, fancy preachers those who are tele uh, you know preachers or some very high position people but the personal investment in the word of god is less so through the rapture ministries that's what i i do through my church ministry um, at concord and other places that's what i do now in manila i was and in rest of, around the world i was speaking to the new christians and god spoke to me to speak certain things bluntly so that they know and i put the challenge before them i said no other religion in the world will allow you to call god almighty their father there's only one religion and that is the christianity and because the son of god came to die for us he owns us and that is why he said in john 1:12 he gave them the right to be his adopted children that right makes us gives us the power and authority and the premix to call him abba father amen otherwise it's not automatic yeah. people think it's automatic but it is not That's you don't know the son and you through him you just want to just because you have heard you have read yeah i've i've also heard people say i know jesus so it is okay you know that much but there what is the relationship what is the action you put into those commandments that's been written there so these are very important things so i think that's a wonderful i i see your uh, rapture ready ministry call as a awakening like you are waking exactly. up the bride of christ yes. it looks like there are some people are sleeping come on wake up you know this is what the scripture says you know are you qualified for it you know that's a wonderful uh, way of uh, god uh, choosing people for these important aspects during these dark, dark times so uh, so that's how uh, i think uh, now you are ministering there's a group here in australia concord church where uh, uh, children from pa- pakistan christians and you know, gather together and there's a fellowship that goes on with our fijian brother tanga tanga church that's, that's wonderful right. yes and then that's where you launch your rapture ready ministry and now you also have this uh, israel trip that you organize as the lord leads you so how many times have you been to israel now after he called you yeah, yeah by the grace of god i've been there eight times eight times so Praise yeah i i that's another investment i'm doing in the people because yeah. um, yeah, we we are commanded in psalm 122 and other places in romans as well that uh, we need to bless israel and we need to share gospel with them we also need to uh, the part uh, of uh, the blessing is not only the financial aid that you send from here or the gift that you send you have to be there so you you need to see the places where jesus walked where he stood where he you know was born where he died where he rose again and that that makes the bible alive 
and thank God that the groups that have gone, they have multiplied into a small groups and they have taken their own groups. So uh, that is that is really great. The other area that I'm uh, I'm involved in is called International uh, Sindhi Partnership (ISP). Those those Hindus that migrated from Pakistan at the time of partition, they came to India and from soon from India they moved into the Southeast Asia, into the Europe, into Africa, into America and Canada. Because I speak Sindhi, I was brought up in in Sindh and. Uh, uh, I can associate with them, and I was born in the same city, which is the which is very close to their heart, which is Hyderabad, Hyderabad Sindh. So I speak the language. I'm, I was born there. I was brought up there. I still have a house in Hyderabad Sindh, um, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, that group is uh, is uh, is uh, going through certain tough times, you know, because uh, some half of the family members have accepted Lord Jesus, half haven't. Especially the male participants of the family, you know, they they are a bit reluctant. So there's a wonderful opportunity. So along with going to Israel and uh, investing into people's life, and uh, also helping Israel, uh, Israel's economy. Uh, last year, when last time when I went, the the security asked me, I said, "Why you keep coming to Israel?" I told them that if I don't come, you won't get paid. He looked at me like this. He said, "What do you mean?" I said. Think, uh, see these 22, 22 people that are with me, you know, every one of them is going to spend at least $5,000 in your country, minimum. Some will spend even more, you know, up to 10000 So as it is, it is more than 100000 US dollars in your country. That's not bad in about 10 days. And he says, yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> then, uh, so, uh, what I'm saying is that this is the investment in people's life, in, 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 the, in, the, in the country of Israel, and also uh, in these different groups that uh, uh, that I associate with. So I don't let any opportunity pass by if I have to talk about Israel or if I have to talk about uh, you know the scriptures or um, anything uh, that is straight and hard to mention. I, I should mention that's 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 my calling. Yeah, amazing. At this time, I would like to share the screen of your website which I have already got it. So let me try and just show it to the viewers. Um, okay. I'm going to share, uh, let me see if I could get, uh, I got the website here, yes. All right, so we can show them, yes. Can you see it? Can you see it, brother? Can you see it? Yes. Yes, yes. great. Yes. So that's our website here, Rapture Ready Ministry. So we have uh, a mission. Let me see if I can uh, yes. maximize this. Just give me a moment, yes. So that's Sister Catherine. Yes, that's wonderful. That's and right. both of you there. Yes. Uh, so let's go here. I'm going to show Evans, I think. Evans, you have your brochure for Israel. Of course, this is your website, Facebook website. And uh, we had, I think you did organize a trip uh, for this year, isn't it? Because of the virus, it's pending. I want to open this up, this itinerary. as like looking, you know, 17th March and... Uh, the right. <laughs> yeah, I got. I was like looking at it and look at all the you know people who have been there already. I think that's a mm. yeah. uh, and you're organizing it. This is for ten days, isn't it? You do this that's for right. ten days. That's right. And yeah, then ten, yeah, ten to fifteen days. Like, ten to fifteen. Because we also go to Egypt and Jordan. So oh, so Egypt and Jordan. So I think that's your Egypt, Jordan, Israel. So these are the places you go. That's wonderful. Yeah. So anybody who wants to go, you can link. I will anyhow post this website for you viewers um, uh, in the description of this video where you will find of this website. And then you can have a look of this uh, uh, place where he organizes whenever it's a well, when we can travel and it's safe to travel. And he also mm -hmm. has his uh, sermons here. The website is raptureadyministries.com.au and he has all his sermons. If you want to know, based on the topic, he has placed everything. I think from 2013, since this website has started, he all has this uh, preachings all over here. You can just click the link and you can open and it will be there on a PDF and you can use it for your sermons and you can uh, distribute it and be blessed. So that's what's in my heart. And plus he has Bible insights, some of those number of... Uh, things that you would like to know. So I would like to brief you on this as well as his uh, ministry is to wake up the children of God 
and uh, that's his goal objective. He's uh, so close to Israel that he doesn't start without saying shalom. See, everywhere you can see, he loves, <laughs> he loves, and that's that's where he is. So we will have this uh, posted in the description. And uh, yes, uh, so please do uh, get in touch. If there's any email, yes, there is an email if you would like to, and then we'll see how we go. And then there's also this uh, Facebook as well. So we will post this uh, into Facebook. You can also see his uh, ministry work and uh, this, uh, because this website is linked, uh, embedded with the Facebook information where they launch Rapture Ready Ministry. So we can get you ready for the rapture, the prerequisites, whatever you need to have in the anointing. You have the church that he is preaching, Hyderabad, Pakistan. We have Sharjah, Dubai, and then more is on. You can have a look at yourself. Uh, I will anyhow post these links and uh, it will be available on the description of his testimony at the moment. I will stop sharing this and let's go back to the brother. And uh, is there anything now uh, that you would want to tell the viewers and they've been listening to you faithfully and do you have anything that you would like to share as a part of your ministry or for them that will help them or they are persecuted or they don't know about rapture or they need a personal relationship with God or how they don't know how to cling to God like you cling to God with a particular verse how they can move on from here see uh, yes uh, why not uh, the thing is that we have to spend a lot of time in the Word of God and understand what it is saying and why it is saying. What is the context and what is the message for me? Like every individual must ask. We are living in the times and in the days that anything can happen anytime. So as I was able to get hold of those scriptures, only five verses, chapter 15 of John. God is definitely going to lay it into your spirit. Every scripture is important, valuable, but you feel that one scripture is speaking to you more than the other. After picking that up, then you have to ask the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. We have to understand what the Holy Spirit is, what is his role, and what he can do for us. If we have a very clear understanding, because Jesus is not on the earth at the moment, but he's in us, around us, and he can be used through us as well. So these are the benchmarks of a good Christian to know the word and to know the Holy Spirit. Together, one of the job of the Holy Spirit is to remind us the words of Jesus Christ. If we are not familiar with the word of Jesus Christ, what, what are we going to remind? You know, what he's going to remind to us. So it's, it's not spending time for the, for the purposes of just spending time that, oh yes, I have to read Bible. So cut, 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 people, that's what people do. Even if you read one page, half a page, but more important is to talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. When, when the ministry started, I had only four weeks of holiday every week, every month, every year, sorry. And I realized in my spirit that I have to change the job. And I started talking to the Lord that this is what I feel. If you are in it, create a situation whereby I leave all my these big responsibilities of millions of dollars of budgets and putting, putting people into the employment and you know this reporting and that reporting and this meeting and that, that meeting. I'm available for you to come down. And you know what? For 16 years, I worked in Australia Post, night job. So that in the evening, in the, in the, in the daytime, I can research the scriptures. I can work out the ministry requirements and work out my travel plans because the holidays in, uh, in that job was, was, was uh, more compared to my previous executive jobs. 
I was getting 30% money more. Plus I could have, there were a number of uh, 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 areas where I can, I, I can take times off. Like uh, the one was, is called uh, uh, 4060. You, you deduct certain money uh, every fortnight from your pay. And then when you need, you can have time off. Plus five weeks extra. That helped me to promote the ministry, go to Israel, go to Europe, America, Canada, Pakistan, Middle East, elsewhere, you know, even Fiji to, to minister, Korea. But you should be ready to sacrifice. If I had taken my ego, no, 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 I'm, I was the project director. I was the project director for United Nations, for YMCA, project manager for DTI here, you know, general manager of Australia for this, this, this department. I wouldn't have been able to do the ministry. So we have to come down and try to speak with the Lord, try to listen to him. Let's see what the Holy Spirit is telling you, teaching you, want you to do. And in these times of trouble, that is the strength. Because uh, if we only hear from the people and think that whatever goes with them will happen to you as well, it's not going to go. Every individual is different before the Lord. He has a purpose and plan for every single person. What he has a plan for me is not the same plan for my son. It's not the same plan for my wife. So I have to tune myself to listen to him, what he wants you to wants me to do. If there's a sacrifice involved, yes. If there's a, a giving involved, yes. If there's, a, a, you know, lower down myself in, in terms of humbleness and meekness and take time to, you know, go what you call... Um, extra mile yes so yes is a big word in the ministry amen so it's a sacrificial you know we need to take time to sacrifice our side we have now received his sacrifices why not we give it also back to him isn't it how wonderful is that yes, praise god that's a wonderful message and i would like you to uh pray for the people at the moment who will be viewing whenever they are going to view Pray for them to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior if they have never known him personally. And also for those who have not waken up, you know, who's not awake or who don't know how to maintain their relationship with the Lord and then move on to look forward into rapture. Would you please, uh, you know, break up and then pray for them uh, at the moment before we uh, bid goodbye to them. Yes. Okay. 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 Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your kindness upon our life. In fact, your mercy and your grace for, for the whole mankind, because you decided to send your son to this earth. And he came with a purpose to die. He came with a mission to die for the sins of the world. And those who have accepted him, those who have accepted his sacrifice, his purpose of coming, his dying on the cross, they have been awarded a designation to be your adopted children of God. But that is only through Jesus Christ, your son, because he paid the price. He purchased us from um, uh, with his blood. The wages of sin was death, and he paid that, those wages through his personal sacrifice. And now that when we believe in him, or if we have heard of him, if we are called Christians as followers of Christ, I pray that each and every believer will have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We call him the Savior, and Savior is the world, because no other name has been given under heaven or under earth or in between. Father God, we just ask, I just pray and humbly request you that grant that desire, that hunger, that thirst to every believer to have a first-hand relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That he is going to come back. He is the one who is going to take us to heaven. He is the one with whom we are going to spend eternity. Few years in heaven and then on earth. We are the ones who are going to spend time with him in his millennial kingdom governing from Jerusalem and the rest of our eternity with him we need to know him 
on first hand basis on one to one basis and we need to know what he has said what is demanding or asking us in a in a, in 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 our walk with him and uh, as 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 believers to shine for him to live for him let him live through us in us and with us and those who are contemplating to know him i pray that you will have a special blessing upon them open their heart open their mind let them see the dignity the power and the authority of your son jesus christ the way he divided the history the way the prophecies that were made 700 years before his birth 520 years before the birth in relation to his birth in the book of micah now the 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 probability of coming these prophecies to pass was one in 10 raised to 17 if they can come to pass that means everything else that is said in the scripture about him will also be true and will come to pass and we as believer must know it and take it into our spirit so i pray lord all those who are contemplating to accept jesus christ help them to know him in entirety and those who already know and would watch this video or this interview you will stir in them the hunger and the thirst about jesus christ he is the son of the living god he is the savior of the world he is the life of the world he is the bread of life and he said without me you can't do anything i have experienced this and i'm grateful to you lord that you laid this verse into my spirit and i have been walking with this spirit till today and i've seen the blessings that have come my way i was not able there's nothing in me i do not know even a single formula of chemistry or physics or math now but when i look back your blessings upon my life the authority and the power and the name that i have received in the world it was all and all and all because of you alone i'm so grateful and i want this for everyone who's listening to me to catch it without jesus we are nothing we can't do anything father god i pray that all those who are going to listen to our talk to our video to our conversation to this testimony they will have some kind of um, hunger and thirst to know you more and more and more let the spirit of god work in them and let the spirit of god reveal the son of god in the children of god to bring glory and honor to a god and our father which known to be yahwa yahwa elohim yahwa the nine yahwa al shaddai yahwa jara and many more names thank you lord for this opportunity we also pray for sister taj sister ruth her endeavor to to bring the gospel out and to to serve you from this platform bless her lord and bless her immensely and abundantly for the glory of your name we ask this in jesus mighty and the matchless name amen amen amen, amen. praise god i will continue also to pray for you as other viewers who are Please. Christians we will pray for you um right now in the name of jesus christ heavenly father like you have brought brother agustin wilson lord lifted him up to shine your light to all his community and to the world the way you have called him from his humble uh, upbringing to where he is today and further lord you have given him this ministry heavenly father to wakening up the bride of christ heavenly father right now lord every barriers lord be broken every chains be loosened when he speaks may the anointing flow through the people may his mm. family lord be blessed each and every one his daughters his son who has ministry lord his wife heavenly father and all the family members who are here in australia we commit each one of them lord as they minister lord heavenly father 
Lord Jesus Christ, may your grace abound through their calling, Lord, to reach the ends of this earth. Not one should be lost heavenly far. Bless yes. them, Lord Jesus Christ. Not one look back, Lord. May everyone receive you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We uplift you. All this is done only for your glory, honor, and praise. Yes, there's no other purpose, Lord, but you alone is the reason for this time and this interview. We bless you as you bless this, Lord, whatever work we do for you, to reach the people, the right people, Heavenly Father, so they will be blessed. Right now, I invite the viewers also to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not done so, please invite him into your heart. This is the moment. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart. I want to receive you. I want to know you personally. I want you, Lord. I want to be in the rapture. I want to spend time in eternity with you. Forgive me, Lord, if I have sinned. I repent of my sins, Lord. Come and show me yourself that you are the only true God. If that is the truth, let me also know you. Let me not be lost. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for dying on the cross for me. We love you, Heavenly Father. We praise you. Receive me, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to know you more. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we pray and agree for all these people and thank you, Lord, for this brother and his families and the entire nation of Pakistan. May you bless them and the associated nations, India, wherever, Lord, in the United States, here in Australia, everywhere in the world. As the brother preaches in Philippines, Korea, Lord, we just commit all these places to you, the United Kingdom, everywhere, Lord. Lord, bless each one of them as we move from here. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And let Israel be blessed, Lord, as well, as we continue from here to move on to your next call. We love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, my Amen. 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 I mean, that's wonderful time spending time with you like this. It's yes, really amen. Exactly. Just enjoyed every bit of it. And uh, let's uh, uh, bless the Lord. And uh, we will stop here, viewers. And thank you so much for watching and taking so long a time. And please do share with everybody, whoever you think will be blessed. Uh, and continue to come and visit the brother's website and also wherever i'm putting this on it's read the bible and you can take time for yourself and be a sacrificial person which you knew to receive christ for his glory honor and praise in jesus mighty name bye bye everyone you want to say bye 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 thank you for listening may thank god bless you, you. i do yeah i mean yeah.